So welcome everybody to what I hope will be uh, a very informative, um, inspirational panel discussion uh, with some of our um, advocates of ACCA. I am Bridget Foley and I'm the Member Advocate Manager and I'm delighted to welcome five individuals who I know will inspire you and um, allow you to answer questions later as well. So I'm going to hand over to James right now um, and we'll do some welcomes and just get people in the room really. So over to you, James. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Bridget. And um, thank you very much to all of the, uh, the ACCA team for, for having us on today. It's been an absolute pleasure. And um, we'll just go around, around the room quickly, just as a, a quick hello, just to introduce yourself nice and easy, sort of where you're calling in from today. So if that, shall I go, come to you first? Absolutely. Hi, I'm Ethel Chogru. Um, I'm an ACCA member. Um, calling in from Brig House, uh, which is near Halifax, West Yorkshire, so up north. Fantastic. Bola, what about yourself? Morning, um, everyone. My name. Morning, everyone. My name is Bola Lawa, and I'm calling in from Essex. <laughs> lovely, lovely stuff. And Farah, we're about you calling in from today. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm calling in from Huddersfield, West Yorkshire. And finally, Wendy, what about yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Wendy. I'm calling in from Sheffield. Fantastic. Um, my name is James, everyone. If you're just tuning in, it's great to see so many participants joining the conversation. Um, I'm calling in from Lincoln today. I mean, it's nice and cloudy here, but uh, we're, we're looking forward to a very sunny and glorious presentation today where if anyone's going through the actual sort of uh, recording of this, would like to know what we're going to be going through. Nice little welcome. So if anyone's got any questions, you've got five qualified ACCA members here. If you've got any questions, feel free to put it in the chat below. But the way that the sort of webinar will run through is first of all, we'll go into sort of uh, a nice introduction where uh, everyone actually currently works and what their drives have been to actually go and work in that industry and sector. And then we'll be coming on to any sort of challenges, hurdles, adversities that we've all faced within our careers, which I'm sure will be quite interesting on there. Then we'll be coming on to a question I always get all the time is, what should I do after when I've qualified uh, as an ACCA member for future ambitions? That'll be the third part of our area, uh, subject area today. And then finally, uh, employability skills. Where can we add value from our sectors that we would recommend for people who are tuning in today that they should look into it? And it's great to see we've already got questions flooding in already, a whole one. So if anyone who is watching in live, feel free to put it in the chat at the bottom and we will have time at the end for a lovely Q&A on there. So I hope that's all good for everyone on there, first of all. So we'll, we'll, we'll sort of kick out, kick off straight away on there. And um, if I'll come to you then, sort of whereabouts are you currently working on there um, at the moment? What, what's your sort of areas just to introduce yourself to everyone properly? Yeah, so I work in practice. Um, I am a director at a chartered accountancy practice. Um, I started probably in about 2011 and um, I kind of just worked my way up and um, we took undertook a management buyout at the start of 2020 with my business partner, Johnny Stead, and uh, we run our own practice and we kind of I love practice because you can kind of get to see clients and be with them a lot closer and help them through business and their relationships. Fantastic. Oh, I used to work in practice myself all those years ago, but uh, we'll come on to that later. Um, Bola, what about yourself? Where are you currently working? Well, I'm an accounting professional and I work currently in a technical accounting team in a banking sector. I initially started off in practice. I started off as an apprentice then moved on from that. I started working in industry. Throughout my time in industry, I've had the opportunity to work in various teams in financial and regulatory reporting roles. So mainly external reporting, looking at, you know, that annual accounts and things of that nature. Marvellous. Gosh, quite a wide variety on there and uh, different routes already, isn't it? And uh, Farah, what about yourself? Um, so I've always worked in industry, um, many different sectors, um, but currently so over the last six and a half years or so. I've been working for a large Fortune 500 company called Acom. Acom is one of the biggest engineering infrastructure companies in the world. So you can imagine you're learning something new every day, even if it is accounting. Um, I'm currently working in a finance business partnering role, um, very much a combination of commercial finance, financial reporting, and working with senior leaders across the business. 
Marvellous, Farah. Gosh, we, we've definitely got a wide array of, if, I mean, if anyone's asking about practice, industry, we've got the whole Ooh. lot here today. But uh, Wendy, what about yourself? Where do you, where do you currently work and, and in what position? Yeah, I'm currently working as a treasury specialist um, at British Oxygen Company. It is also known as BOC in the UK. Um, my main role in BOC is leading and managing the UK and Ireland treasury function, um, looking at the liquidity, capital and risk, implementing funding strategies, uh, working with senior leaders in major corporate restructuring and managing large scale capital inflows and boosting cash visibility. Um, so a bit of a background about BOC, we are the largest uh, industrial medical and special guest provider. Um, we are also a Fortune Global 500 company with a, a part of Linda Group in ex, uh, with a combined revenue in excess of 17 billion revenues and employ 58,000 employees worldwide. Fantastic. And uh, I'm, I'm sure you're in charge of all of them, Wendy. That's um, on there <laughs> to a point. Um, and uh, also just to sort of chip in on here, um, my name's James. I used to work in practice. So I'm from that sort of background on there. Uh, it was the case of financial accounting, bits of taxation on there, advising clients. And then now I currently work at the University of Lincoln as one of the senior lecturers there as well. So I'm, I'm chipping in on the public sector teaching area sort of role. But uh, we'll come on to just a, a sort of normal question for everyone here as well. But what year did you start studying for your ACCA and what year did you end up qualifying as well? I think it'd be really helpful for any um, current students on there. Oh, arc back in your minds, arc back. I mean, for, for me, mine was uh, a case of I finished university in 2013, got, got stuck in straight away, and then I qualified in 2017, which it doesn't feel like yesterday when you got that certificate through the post. But if I, what about yourself? When did you start and when did you qualify? <laughs> You're testing me now, James. I haven't got my date ready. Um, yeah, so I think I started, um, I joined up with the ACCA in about 2012. Um, I actually have a background of accountancy in university. So I kind of studied in university, um, did my master's, and then it was kind of, I don't know what I want to do. So I kind of did some work experience and I was lucky enough to be able to have a feel in practice. Um, because I think when you come out of university, you're not sure whether it's management, whether it's chartered, and to be honest, I didn't really understand the difference. And so look, luckily enough, um, I worked in practice and then I started in 2012. And then I think I just did two exams every, um, it used to be every six months back then. Um, mm. And so I think I must have qualified maybe 2015, 2016. Um, and from there, it's I was always working throughout. Um, and so I'd say about 2016 and yeah, it must be actually, because my FCCAs come through in 2021, which you hold after five years. So, woohoo, part of that too. <laughs> we, could, we could do your virtual clap on that maybe, but uh, fantastic. You've got the certificate through as well. But I mean, Bola, coming on to you. Gosh, aren't back. What, what years are we talking? It hasn't been that long ago, but for some reason, it's just, it's a bit, because you work at the same time, it just becomes like a massive blur because you're so doing so, do so many things at the same time. But I think I started in 2017. So I started in 2017. I, I qualified. I got finished, did my last exam in December 2019. So I got my actual certificate come through in 2020. So early 2020. So around that, that time. So 7, 2017 started, 2019 did my last exam and obviously got my qualification in 2020. Oh, fantastic. How did it feel to get the uh, get the certificate through in the post? Amazing. Like literally a <laughs> massive weight off my shoulders. <laughs> all, the, all those hours and, and long Honestly. nights and evenings and weekends. Yeah. I mean, uh, poor, worth it, isn't it? But Farrah, what about yourself? Um, so I think I'm going to work backwards here. <laughs> um, so this month I actually got an email through to state that I was FTCA. Um, which is absolutely amazing. Haven't got the actual certificate yet, which I'm waiting for. Um, so if you go back five years, qualified around 2016, um, and I can't think about when exactly I joined as a member. So I got quite excited because I took a year out of uni and did a finance placement. And so when I graduated, I was like, right, I, I know what I want to do. I want to join the ACCA. I want to do the exams, want to get qualified. And then, um, I know that there was 
bit of a gap after getting that excited <laughs> and trying to get in you know just working get into that routine before i started actually um studying for my exams so i think it must have been around 2014 and then um yeah qualified in 2016 i think it was about three years fantastic and uh, wendy what about yourself yeah, I think I did my master's and my ACCA at the same time. Um, I finished, uh, I managed to qualify, uh, finish my exams in 2011 and got, got qualified in 2016 and uh, doing uh, quite a bit of a temporary roles and uh, different finance roles in between. And I managed to um, secure a fellowship uh, status recently. Fantastic. So have you got your, your FCCA um, certificate through now, Wendy? Yes, I have, yeah. Oh, I mean, just to make Farah jealous, but uh, what, what's it like <laughs> getting that through? What, what, what's it like to get the certificate through, Wendy? It feels really awesome. You could use the FCCA name after your name, so it's, it's a true privilege to have that. Oh, marvellous. Yeah, I mean, it, it will be worth it. Don't worry. I, I've not got mine yet, so it's OK. I, I've, I've still got to do my CPD for, for this year as well, get it all signed off. But uh, out of interest, though, because we've still got a bit of time on this section, why did you why did you all pick ACC? I know we've come through different routes of apprenticeships, university experience. Um, but uh, in fact, why, why did you pick it, first of all? For me, it was either the ACCA or the SEMA, um, and I didn't quite understand the difference um, at the time. It was a management accountant being in one company, and I realised I love kind of being with people, talking, having that relationship. So I kind of, when I came out of university, I was thinking, do I want to go into one company or do I want to work in a company where I can be part of, you know, seeing so many clients? Um, and it was actually um, someone who said, if you... You know, if you go into a big company, you'll, you'll be working in departments. Um, whereas if you go into a smaller company, you might get an exposure to everything and see how it all works out. And so um, I was lucky enough to get a work experience um, and I, I then got a feel of it. And the person who was actually the owner was ACCA and there was someone else who was SEMA. And I just kind of knew ACCA was the route because you just get exposure to the practice and, and to so much more. Um, at the time and and that was my decision and, and definitely stand by it yeah you don't look back on these sort of things do you same, no. for, same for you bowler as well or what what's your, been your sort of experience so for me it's always been a decision between acca or aca so i started up as an apprentice and during i did my aat initially my technician qualification and i felt there was actual good a nice transition between AAT and ACCA which really obviously helped me with that because of the exemptions you get from that as well and also for me I felt like ACCA covered a wide range of different things in different areas of finance and accounting so I thought that was a good that was a good way for me to also get that and also if someone didn't go to university also have an option to be able to do Oxford Brooks degree as well was also mm. another positive for me as well which ended up making me go for ACCA in the end because I felt there was a lot more I could do with the ACCA qualification. Yeah, I oh, com completely agree with you. And, and the, the collaboration with the Oxford Brooks um, degree as well, a fantastic yeah. opportunity for, for students who don't necessarily go down the university route, but they want some experience of going through it. And how did you get on with your, with your project that you submitted for it? Was your, was your oh. mentor good? <laughs> oh, the project, the project. So I finished my qualification and I felt to myself, so I, that was in 2019, I did my last exam. And when I got my qualification, I thought, I'm going to go straight into it. I don't want to waste too much time, go straight into the project. And it was, it was, it was, it wasn't easy. It wasn't an easy yeah. one. I think I chose, I chose one of the options because I worked in you know, annual reports and, you know, analyzing annual reports. So I chose one of the questions I chose was to do with that, but it wasn't an easy process, you know, working on that while I felt, sometimes I felt it was even more than the, studying for an exam sometimes because it yeah. took a lot more you know writing that that piece of work was absolutely took a lot took a lot out of me and also having the support of my mentor was also quite helpful as well there's also various elements to the project as well not just the write-up you having to do your presentation alongside mm -hmm. it as well also as someone who didn't go to university as well knowing how to do certain things that's needed you know reference and those type of things is always quite new to me so I had to really adjust myself from studying for exams and actually doing the projects but I did get an end so I do have my degree now as well. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic I know it's I know exactly I'm going to give you a little round of applause if I gave you one there as well but so uh, would, would, would you recommend um, if say if I'm a uh, an ACCA student not at university 
and I have the option of doing the Oxford Brooks um, degree. Would you recommend it? That's to you, Me? Bolo. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. Depends on depends on obviously what your what your background is. If you've obviously gone to university already and you've already got your degree, you might think there's no, you don't really necessarily need it. But I do think for someone who did an apprenticeship, even though you know, I've started working in my career and I was actually quite doing quite well. I felt it was still good for me to actually test myself and do that element as well because the option was available. And I didn't want to look back and think, oh, I didn't take that opportunity while I could. So I would recommend it as well. It did teach me a lot. Marvellous on that. And uh, Farah, did you, do, did you do the Oxford Brooks one or, or, uh, or not? No, I think I you went to university, didn't you? Yeah, I went to university. I did an accountancy and finance degree um, and I took a year out within that. Um, so my year out was actually for um, a stockbrokers um, and so I, I went a completely different route of like financial services versus working in-house in their finance department. Um, so I was like okay I quite like this, um, I like this sort of side of things um, but then all my mentors at the time and people around me and even at uni um, the speakers were all working in practice um, and so I wanted that option of both a bit like what Ifat says. Um, and so, yeah, I decided to do ACCA on the basis that that was the most exposure that I got, but also gave me the most flexibility opportunities I felt at the time. I think it was the right, it was the right decision. <laughs> <laughs> when you get your FCCA certificate through Farah, it'll, it'll all be worth it on there. It'll be all good. But, uh, Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> how, did, how did you find out about ACCA, Wendy? Um, it, it was highly recommended in, in my university and, and when I was doing my college studies and um, the speakers, the lecturers, the mentors, um, they've, uh, they would speak, constantly speak to uh, recommend ACCA to the students. Um, it gives us a very uh, good overview of the accounting field um, and also the benefits of it is uh, we get to have exemptions um that we could take off the um acca exams um another reason is because of the influence of my father he's also an acca and accountant and um which is why i follow his footsteps well I, I know christmas is looming wendy but if you told him for christmas that you're going to do another professional body i don't know if that would be deemed a present or not, but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you picked the right one on there. But uh, I mean, for, for me personally, it was a case of like at university, one of the first professional bodies I heard of with ACCA. And then when I worked in practice, there were other professional bodies there, but the ACCA members really stood out and they just spoke of it so highly. And I'm going to say it for everyone here who's part of the lovely panel that are getting to meet today. But I remember when I was a student, you think to yourself, oh, ACCA, global professional body how will I ever be involved in it I'm sure I'll just be a member and I'll, I'll be that person who's on a list or something but it's, it's not the case at all where you can get in contact with so many different members around the world we've got a fantastic ACCA team have helped us out today and for anyone who's listening in or watching the recording if you ever want to reach out and collaborate to support other future members or just offering advice to other people who are currently qualified then then just get involved and do it that's the main thing and whether it's local panels international assemblies they've got so many opportunities for yourself out there just get in touch would, would you agree with that if I, I mean we're all here today i completely agree with that um i, I actually have it on my linkedin because i've posted it we actually went to an accountics webinar which is like um, a conference where all the suppliers of like the accountancy industry get together um and it was only in september um and my partner my business partner johnny went oh there's acca stand let's go talk to them and i kind of had a little bit of a a sweat and I was like Ooh, what are we going over there for we'll get into trouble you know let's just leave it um, and he was like no no let's just go say hi um, and so we went to say hi um, and it was just amazing because it was the best conversation of the day we met Bridget and um, we met other people as well Fiona McPhee and we just had such a good chat. I ch chatted with Fiona, um, Johnny chatted with Bridget, and it was lovely. You know, the amount of stuff they were telling us about what they actually do, whereas for me, it was pay, you know, I think it was a firm's I was in, it was just pay certificate, you remember, and that's about it. Um, and it was just amazing to actually see. And then Bridget invited us to an event as well. And we got to meet so many people on the ACCA team and so many people like yourself, James, where you're involved with ACCA. 
and it's just amazing and hopefully you know i can be involved a lot more with acca um but you're definitely not just a, a name and a number um mm. which is hands down what i thought i was probably pre-september this year mm. so yeah I, 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 I do I completely agree with you where I'm, from the start of the pandemic, it was a case of I just went, well, I'll, I'll do some online webinars. And and my mindset was, look, oh, we'll, we'll meet in the future face to face. And it'll be you know, someone will come over and tap me on the show and went, oh, look at that webinar we did together in 2020. Wasn't that fantastic? And what other things are you doing from them? Because it definitely um, spirals into other opportunities and, and to put yourself out there. I mean, Bola, how did you find out about today or? What's your, been your experience engaging with the professional body? I think my, I think I feel like it's more of like a community. I think with being a since qualifying as well, initially I did feel like I was just going to be another qualification finish now and that was going to be the end of it. But I felt like I'm even still part, I'm still much more, much more part of the organisation and part of the ACCA body, even post qualifying. You know, I've had opportunity to work, do other events as well. And it's been great to meet a lot of students and a lot of people upcoming, work coming into the profession, giving some advice and also sharing, you know, experiences. You can relate so much to each other and it's always quite good to have those conversations with people about their experiences how they're finding it how you was able to deal with certain things as well so i think it's great that we have a nice a great community where we can still network and engage with each other so if you had do you have any struggles along the way there's always a lot of people that can help you out if you just reach out oh 100 agree with you on that and uh Farry yourself i mean uh have you how did you find out about today or what other things you've been engaged with for the professional body in yeah, so I think LinkedIn is a really great thing. Um, and, you know, it's a great, a great way of networking. And I think especially with the ACCA, we encourage to sort of state the, the letters after our name. And it really gives us all that sort of identification that we can all reach out to each other. Um, and I've, I've built up some great relationships um, through networking like that myself too. Um, and yeah, I think for this event, especially Bridget, did, did ask me to to join the event and it's actually my first time doing something like this um which is actually exciting because i kind of feel like i've learned so much from my journey i'm from networking etc but i want to share those lessons learned with others um and also hear from other people too it's really great yeah well, it's, it's all right you know when you do these webinars for her, you know every there's always someone's first time of doing them and who knows from all the participants who are joining us today if you're watching the live recording feel free to leave your details below get in touch and uh, you'd be more than welcome to join us next time on the panel who knows of it uh, wendy what about yourself what, what what brings you here today then um did some of them from the team reach out how do you get involved with the professional body more um I was uh, I was truly amazed with um, the uh, prospects that ACCA has brought me uh, out, brought to, to my career, and I'm very proud of being an ACCA accountant. And I wanted to do something to help to nurture the next generation of professional accountants. Um, um, I'm currently uh, a mentor for a few students. I help them out with employability, talking about uh, how how to move up the career and do a qualification in an ACCA. Um, I help out with the interview and CV techniques. And I think um, it, 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 it's really meaningful to me that I could help out other accountants as well. And I was really excited when Bridget approached me for this opportunity to be here. Oh, fair. I mean, that, that's just so fantastic to hear. And and Wendy, obviously, you're a very busy ACCA accountant because we can hear your emails going as well. So it's okay sorry, can to... you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry about do, that. Wendy, Wendy, do not worry about it. It's all good. We're all we're all sweet here. We're all fantastic. So I mean, with everyone who's joining us here on the uh, on the webinar, we've been through a lovely as to you know who we are, what's our sort of background. They've got a real good feel for. All of our experiences now but the, the, the next area which i'm sure we can all chip in on here are well what have been the actual sort of challenges hurdles uh, adversity stumbling blocks whatever you want to call it that we've been through where to to get us up to where we are now in our sort of careers and our acca journeys on it i mean if i do you want to kick us off i mean what sort of springs to mind i always find there's one thing that just niggles in your mind when i say that kind of question 
There is. I think for me, it was um, in my family, I we all kind of have our own careers, but nobody's in accountancy. And I chose accountancy because I was good at maths, but didn't want to do teaching. Sorry, James, um, but didn't want to do cheap teaching. And so I kind of went on to accountancy and there was um, somebody in like our no local neighborhood who was an accountant who you knew from like being younger to, to growing up that they had their own accountancy practice. So my dad kind of got me a meeting with him um, so that I could kind of discuss ACTA, SEMA, practice, what's going on. Um, and I think I was in like year two or year three, just, just starting year three, I think, of um, my ACC, uh, sorry, my degree. Um, and I remember going to see him and he pretty much told me that because I'm a girl and because I'm Asian as well. Um, I, I'd, be, I'd be good at reception jobs or some sort of admin paperwork sort of thing. Um, but you know, it's it's a bit of a man's world. Um, you know, talking to people about their accounts, having trust. Um, you know, they, they they trust a man. You know, but you'll be able to get a job. You know, you you can you can do some paperwork and and get around it. And I remember kind of coming out of there a little bit stunned and. I, you know, at that time, you don't have the confidence talk and you're just like, OK, OK. And I remember coming home and telling my dad and my dad was like, so what are you going to do about it? You know, and my dad's never been one to kind of be like, you're a girl. He's always just said, push harder, you know, keep going, you know, work hard. Um, and if something's hard, work harder at it um, and you'll always get there. So I remember sitting there and he said to me, so what are you going to do about it? And I went, well, I still want to do accountancy. I don't, I don't see why it's a man's world. You know, I don't mm. see why it should be. You know, I do really well in like my dad had a business and I was able to help him. You know, just customer service really. But I just said it's all about trust. You know, I, I can build that. Why why can't I? And um, he said, good, go for it then. And it, you know, it, and I did. And it was just one of those where then when I qualified, I didn't want to apply for somewhere local or something like that so I applied to Halifax I applied to Leeds um, and I struggled actually getting a job because I had a master's as well and I was applying for the junior roles because I wanted to go into a small firm um, and so I ended up having to say to uh, send out letters and I was like I'm willing to work for free just work experience luckily I was staying at home I had the privilege of you know not needing a job straight away which was paid um, and luckily, you know, after a couple of months, someone got in touch from Leeds and they said, you can come um, and just, we don't really have a role, but you can start downstairs in reception and see how it goes. And within a week, I was upstairs in the tax department because they knew I was willing to work. So I was like, you want to write that out? I'll copy it out. I'll type it out. Um, and, you know, he just said, yeah, you can go upstairs and see what it's like in the tax department. I'll see what it's like in the accounts. And I ended up being lucky enough to do nine months there and having full exposure to everything. Um, so by the end, I was doing meetings and doing tax returns, very small ones, but still being able to do it. Um, and that kind of gave me the confidence to go and get another job. Um, and it was a paid job. I was actually funding the ACCA myself at that point because I just needed, I just wanted to start my career. Um, and it, I think it's just resilience, you know, even now in meetings, I'm young, you know, I'm younger than the, the company owners. Um, and I'm obviously, you know, a girl as well, Asian, but it doesn't, it just makes me push harder. And by the end of the meeting, mm. they, they wanted to know, well, how's he, what was your name pronounced again? If that, right, okay, do I have a direct line? You know, and they know I'm good at what I do. I've got trust and I build the relationship and that's all it is. It's just trust and relationships. Um, so I think anything that's kind of pushed me back has just ended up pushing me further yeah. forward because it's just resilience. Um, and it's, I think, I don't know if everyone else can kind of vouch for that as well, um, but it does. It, you don't kind of just sit down and say, okay, I won't be able to do it. It's like, no, you know, why? Mm -hmm. And question it, especially in, you know, the media that's going on at the moment. It, it's all about questioning and, and going for it. Yeah. Oh, no, thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, it, it just really stems from what the qualification of ACCA can give you in terms of that confidence, because you're competent in so many uh, different yeah. areas. So no matter what question you get asked, You'd be able to give a, a a very good qualified opinion on it as well and and i'd just like to add the proactiveness on there as well there's a famous quote by jim rowan saying that uh, don't don't wish it was easier wish you were better and literally just demonstrated that the proactiveness to put yourself out there 
Um, Bola, have you come out? How's, how's your sort of um, uh, process been from start to now? I mean, from the apprenticeship route. So um, my one of the standout moments for me actually did link to how I actually started my career and got my apprenticeship. So this is going back to when I completed my A-levels. So when I completed my A-levels, you know, thinking about the next phase of my life and what I was going to be doing next. At the time, obviously, things are quite different now. There are a lot more options available for people, for people who leave in school. But at the time, university was the main option that was put to me and my peers. And that was what most of my peers were doing. So naturally, I felt like that was what I was going to do as well. But unfortunately for me, I had, um, due to my due to personal circumstances, I realised that university was going to be a viable option for me and obviously therefore wasn't feasible for me to do. I've always known what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to go into accounting. I wanted to work in the financial services industry. So for someone like me, who was quite keen and was quite ready to kind of start, you know, the next phase, go to university, then, you know, go into working. It was a massive knock for me to have that and not go to, univer not go to university or see my peers go and obviously start their period. So through after some thoughts and reflection, you know, going through that phase of thinking, okay, what am I going to do next now? What's going to happen? After thinking about it, I decided to kind of look outside the box and actually start, change the way I was thinking. Look beyond the fact that, okay, I'm not going to university. Leave that now. That's not happening. Actually change. What's going to, what's going to, what's going to happen next? How are you going to overcome this? So that led me to doing some more research into other avenues that I could take as I enter the financial service industry. I realized that before then, I didn't actually really look at the other opportunities available and what other options were available, what the industry was really like, not just, okay, I'm going to go to university and then figure it out. I actually started to do some more deep research into the industry and I found out about apprenticeships, luckily for me. On top of that, I also found out about a social mobility charity, which was focused on helping and supporting young people like myself looking to enter the financial service industry, but didn't have the guidance and support that they needed. And that really was what really kickstarted my career and was really changed my direction totally. You know, the charity really supported me and helped me get to where I am, you know, getting my first role and also supporting me along the way. So just like if that said, that knock was a mess, that was a knockback for me, it also, also elevated me, actually pushed me forward. You know, through the opportunities from the charity and the loads of one of people I met along the way was the reason why I am where I am today. And if I went... Bola, you've got oh. you've got overly excited there. I, I can tell you're so super. Look at, <laughs> come on, Bola, you, you're back. Come back to us. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah, you're back. Oh my God, was I talking all that time? It was on me. No, not all that time, Bola. Don't worry. Only only the last ten seconds. You were getting super carried away there, and uh, everyone who's listening oh. into the recording was just you know just on on the edge of their seat <laughs> waiting for you. No worries. When did I stop? I don't know. Remember where I stopped. But well, um, it's, carry on. It's but, all good. The overall the overall kind of thought behind it was the fact that through that through going through that program, going for the charity actually led me to where I am today if it wasn't for those opportunities I wouldn't I don't think I'll be where I am today and looking mm. back now if I went to university and went through that route I don't think I'll be in the same position I am today because it was such a unique journey to me it wasn't what a lot of people around me were doing but it was something I pushed myself to do and through that I met a whole group of new people a whole group of new young people who were going through the apprenticeship routes who I could relate to through their process and through their their journey as well so yeah. that was oh. A a absolutely fantastic bowler and uh, i mean you left us in in, in stunned silence during it as well but uh, it's, it, it's just the, it's just it's just the resilience that you show and just for anyone who's listening in today who's maybe in that position looking for a new position or finding it difficult it's just the, the two things that i always used to remember when i was searching myself after finishing university was just first of all patience and then secondly was persistence on there as well just keep going at it no matter what day it was you may have loads of knockbacks but then that's all part of the journey as you go through but uh Farry, what, what about yourself from from your perspective um so i'd, I'd probably say uh, you know how i mentioned that i took a year out and you know graduated mm -hmm. then started well i joined the acca as a student um took a gap um, and I guess the reason for that was more the sort of work side of things. So although I had that good start, I then had a bit of a struggle trying to get into a role, which I myself felt comfortable with, but also a company. So in industry, I think it can be difficult to find that right balance or the right sort of team and the, the place where you feel like you're comfortable, you can grow. And a bit like what Ifat said there about, you know, I'm a British born Muslim, um, you know, Pakistani heritage. 
um, visibly I look that way and I guess it's myself as well, the confidence in, in myself to, to be able to fit into a team and um, those sort of things suddenly became a lot more important and started taking up a lot more of my mind. Um, so my focus sort of shifted from like, you know, studying, I want to get chartered da, 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 um, to maybe, you know, uh, what can I do? How can I be perfect at what I'm doing? How can I, you know, be, be the same as my peers? And I think what I learned was that obviously, you know, you have to believe in yourself and actually go at your own pace. I and mean, it's actually okay to not be perfect, um, to not pass every exam straight away and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, we've all had it, that text that goes, yep, you've passed. <laughs> um, and, you know, it can be intimidating in certain ways too, can't it? And um, ju just having that sort of group of people around me, which actually started growing quite positively um, as I started working throughout the years. Um, those people that were just cheering me on every single stage that I got to and going, yes, you can do it. And me going, no, I can't do it. No, you can do it. No, go and do it. Um, so I think that, that obviously helped a lot. Um, and yeah, I think they all celebrated more than me when, <laughs> when I got my um, final, score, you know. Oh, marvellous, marvellous. And, and just to add on to that, that, when you get that text and it pings through and says, oh, well done, James, you've, you've got 50 and you're going, oh, fantastic. But I've also got the text message to say, James, you haven't passed. I'll see you for the research, which uh, for anyone listening in today, it's not the end of the world on it. I know when you compare to yourself to others on like you see on LinkedIn and all this sort of stuff. Don't worry about it. Take a step back, bring yourself together. And then it's, it's getting yourself going again for that next sitting. And if I mentioned it earlier on that when we used to do the exams, there was only two sittings a year, whereas now there's four is a case of it's not the end of the world it's okay regroup and you'll be fine going forward and to be honest with you the failures actually brought me to be a lot more resilient going forward it wasn't just a case of um I'm, I, and for the record here i'm no prize winner of 90 plus or anything on here it's a case of everyone goes at their own own pace but but the end goal is, is still the same on there but coming on to you wendy i mean what, what about yourself um, for for potential challenges that you faced um I think to, to study and work in a foreign country is uh, especially challenging for me um, when English is not my first language and there's some cultural differences. And, and I was doing my ACCA and getting a master's at the same time, doing several jobs, maintaining a living and paying off my university fees. And uh, I had to be really efficient with my studying techniques. Um, like doing lots of practice on past past year papers and I find this is the most uh, useful and way to revise and learn how to approach questions and if you if you could explain it back it means that you understand what you're learning and it is also really important to have the right mindset to put folk, put your mind into something and focus and get it done and you'll be able to achieve your goals and uh, what I realize is passing the exam is not the same as having a qualification. And I happened to graduate at the wrong time during an economic recession, and it was a struggle for me. So I started taking on uh, many temporary finance jobs, volunteering, uh, doing lots of volunteering to help out with charity accountants, going above and beyond, taking on projects outside of my role, carefully planning my next role according to my PER requirements, um looking out for a work mentor who could help me work on my cv and learn how to sell yourself and when i wrote acca after my name the first time it felt so awesome and when i asked back my manager the reason that they hired me is because they valued acca they have confidence in hiring candidates who studied a professional qualification and they wanted to help them achieve membership Oh, no, I completely agree with you. I remember having to send the email to, uh, to, my, to my bosses to say, I'm really sorry, but my old business cards, we're going to have to update these. We're going to have to recycle the old ones because we need ACCA on the end of it because so many people recognize it now. And I don't know about everyone else here, but even people who don't work in accounting, if you say ACCA to them, they actually, cut, they're like, oh, I've heard of someone who's, who's that. Yeah, yeah, they work as a finance director or a CEO or something on those lines which is really, really good to hear. But we've talked about um, the actual challenges, but
but we've got some highly ambitious people here, I can tell. But what are your sort of future goals, everyone? That's for someone who's already qualified ACCA who's tuning in. What are your sort of next steps that you're looking to do for, for your personal ambitions? I mean, if that come on to you, I mean, what are you thinking next? Well, you know, taking over the firm this year, um, having a baby three months before, um, probably the hardest thing I've done. Um, but I think like wanting to progress the firm, grow the firm, but keep the relationships, keep the values in is a key thing. Um, but what I'm actually wanting to do also is do extracurricular activities. So, for example, um, I'm in talks with um, a charity um, to try and be on their trustee board. Um, so that would kind of give me a lot more knowledge and exposure and hopefully I can provide value there as well. Um, so that's kind of the key. And also being part of the ACCA and seeing what I can do and how I can achieve um, to actually be being known as if at, you know, from Slime Story or as the accountant of ACCA, um, just to be able to get more exposure because it's one of those things where we've achieved the ACCA um, and it's it's been able to help others as well on the journey, but also get different types of experience and different types of exposure. Um, it's, it's just lovely because it's, it's not, you know, one of the things is you think ACCA is accountancy, but actually it's, it's, it, it, it's so much more um you, you can create so many more relationships even like with clients you know one of the key things that we we pride ourselves in is the fact that we um are there for them so making sure they're happy with running the business and it's it's what they wanted to do you know when they set it up um so we're kind of the the go-to person who they might have a chat with and say i'm doing this what do you think and it's like have you spoke to so and so because mm. you've got a a, a, a wide network and you can provide them with advice and you know being an accountant it's not about numbers and being behind a desk it's all about being social being about relationships and 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 talking with people so hopefully you know uh, being able to do more with the ACCA and be a trustee on a, on a few boards that that's kind of the dream so far for the next oh. next few years epic and uh, congratulations on on the new young one are you sleeping all right as well no uh, we celebrated her first birthday in october and that was the first um 12 months of me not having a full night's sleep i've got the baby who doesn't sleep i mean she's amazing like really happy doesn't whinge doesn't cry but doesn't sleep during the night um so you kind of you kind of take it so i have a really happy baby but doesn't sleep <laughs> And she well, knows I, I, my calendar better than me. So on the night's way, she's kind of awake from like three till six and you're struggling to sleep. You know you've got a nine o'clock meeting. You just know it. I, I admire the ambition either way. <laughs> I mean, but a different kind of resilience on there. But uh, but Bola, Absolutely. coming on to you, I mean, what, what, are, what are you thinking for the future ambitions now? Um, my In terms of my future ambition is to continue to grow in my career and hopefully be in a more senior positions that will allow me to bring my difference, contribute effectively towards the success of the organisation that I work for. On top of, on top, um, separately from that, I'm a keen learner, so I'm always, I'm always keeping up to date with what's happening in our industry and the future changes and how technology, for example, is going to change, is going to continue to change the way we work and how we do things. So whether that's AI or robotics and how that's going to change things whether it's data and data, data field, how that is going to change things. Or I'm always trying to learn and expand my knowledge in those areas as well. On top of that as well, um, I'm, as I spoke about earlier about the social mobility charity. Social mobility is something I'm very, very keen on and working with the charity that was a part of leadership through sports and business is something that obviously I always want to continue to work on, you know, in the education field as well, looking at young people starting to start in their career, coming from different routes and unconventional routes as well. And speak to those kind of people and sharing my experiences is something that I'm mm -hmm. always keen to do and I want to continue to do more and not forget that and overall just keep the hunger and keep the ambition and just keep wanting to learn more I think that's what I need to make sure I keep I still I still keep doing because I think as you go in your career sometimes you can lose motivation at points so I want to always try to remind myself to keep motivated and keep adapting to whatever mm -hmm. changes come in the future yeah, completely agree with you. It's not just a case of you get your certificate and that's the end of it. It's just continually growing, reading more around the subject. And, and fantastic to hear that you, yourself and Ifat are both giving back to say that, you know, what would I want to have known when I was back in that position? Because it just, just saves someone time and energy and just give them a little insight. But uh, Farrell, coming on to you, what, what, what do you fancy doing in the future? What are your sort of ambitions going forward? Um, so... 
I'm sure we all agree here. I feel like the accountancy profession in itself is changing so much as is, you know, just the way people are working, you know, there's much more conversation on sustainability, ESG. And I feel like in my current role at the minute and the way that I like to work is very much business finance. Um, and I only see that sort of improving and getting better. Um, you know, other, especially at ACOM, I feel like, you know, it's, it's a, a worldwide organization and there's always opportunities um, to progress in different avenues. Um, so, you know, whether it's here, whether it's something else, you know, I feel like there is definitely more I can build on, on the experiences that I've gained. Um, I want to make a difference in, in some sort of way, you know, you want to help people. Um, you want to be making a difference to the communities that we live in. So, you know, whether it is charitable work, whether it is, you know, sort of consultancy, whether it is, you know, progressing in a more strategic role, I feel like they all are parts of who you are. Um, I think as you progress as well, it's not just one thing. If, if you see what I mean, like you, you get, you have different hats almost. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, I'm looking forward to finding new hats. <laughs> I, I, I see them as like buckets in my world, Farah, where it's like, you know, you've got to learn about different things every day. So it's like improving yeah. everything from family relationships to uh, investing, what's new in, in the accounting uh, profession, and then just adventures and trying to different things out. Because everyone here, I can tell now, has got a growth mindset. And it's one of the things that ACCA really sort of homes in on you to improve on a variety of different skills, not just competency and technical areas but then also the soft skills as well as as if that mentioned earlier but finally Wendy I mean what, what are you thinking for for your future I mean you've already mentioned uh, masters ACCA you know so many things on all at once what what are you thinking going forward um I think I want to look being able to look back on myself and be proud of the things that I do um, I have a few future goals including uh, completing a PhD uh, be at the forefront of my career and becoming an expert in my field, um, looking to managing a larger team of employees, um, taking on bigger projects and getting recognised uh, by industrial leaders. Um, I'm currently uh, a trustee board of uh, various charity organisations um, because I wanted to give back to the community. And I'm also a workplace mentor uh, and also a, a university mentor. Uh, helping out students with their career and guiding them on their yeah, accountancy qualification. Fantastic. And I hope to continue that, yeah. Well, well Wendy, you, you've literally just hit on the second habit in the book that I'm currently reading of Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I don't know if anyone's read it here, but uh, Wendy's just mentioned the second one of start with the end in mind. And they always picture to say, imagine that you're 60, 70, 80, or not able to sort of get up off your chair and looking back on your life, it's a case of the, uh, the fear of, of, of regret is far greater than the actual fear of, well, what if I make a failure of it? Or what if I get something wrong or anything on those lines versus just sort of sitting around and not doing anything, which is so pleasing to hear, Wendy, if you need any help with that PhD. Um, uh, I work in public sector, as we know, with uh, with my lecturing. I know it's not if that's a cup of tea or maybe anyone else is here, but uh, <laughs> someone's got to do it on there. But now I know we've got lots of questions coming in, guys, as well. But the final, final thing I've got to mention, we'll keep it short and sweet. Just put down a couple of words. If you were to give uh, advice for someone to go away today, have a look into a particular area, such as maybe AI, for example, artificial intelligence, Short and sweet, if what would you recommend for someone to go away and research that could be helpful in their future employability or some area of accounting that is going to be important in the future? Yeah, I think AI has changed like the, the focus in accountancy, AI being the fact that software, like in practice, soft, software processes all your receipts, your payments, the bank feed comes in and it automatically matches off. So the, you know, the, the process has changed. So I would probably say, look at like advisory, like what does advisory mean? What, what can you do for clients? Because for, for us, we're there to support clients. So for us, we didn't worry about, um, you know, not being able to do bookkeeping, not being able to do VAT returns. We were like, okay, let's get clients to do it. Let's educate the clients and then provide them with different services. So see what, what they, so for us, I'll sit down with the client and say, what's your target? What do you want to do? Um, because there's no point saying, let's just grow the business. Let's add 
200 grand, you know, 300 grand onto sales. And then your profit figure changed by about 40 grand. It's, it's not what you want to do. So it, it's kind of advisory, I think, is a m massive thing um, in practice, uh, yeah. what you can give to a client, um, because that's what an accountant will be. It will be the social side, the relationships, the business advice, um, all of that. I think that's changing um, the way it is. So I would kind of be saying, have a look into advisory and what it means. And also the AI, um, every app kind of does the same thing. So having mm -hmm. an idea of and play about with download a trial um, of let's say zero or something like that, add your bank to it, have a play about with it. And that will be amazing for anyone who's mm. going to apply for a job because you can say, yeah, I downloaded an app. I've given it a go. I understand how it works because technically speaking, all the apps kind of do the same thing. Some are smoother, some are a little bit different, mm. but they offer 14 days free trial. You need a bank account. You've got one. You need some receipts. You've got your Tesco receipts. Go for it. Have a play. It shows initiative. It shows proactiveness and employers love it. We love it. Um, in terms of producing yourselves advisory definitely as well cool yeah i, I think i've actually seen uh, that in one of the questions as they've been coming in in the session oh. so we've got we've got ai we've got advisory i mean bola short and sweet one or two words what what would you say that you if you um, go pop in a search engine the main thing i'm i'm currently looking at, at the moment is looking at data working in industry i think data is a massive thing looking at data science and data engineering i think that's an area that i'm starting to look into a lot more so i would I'll recommend that. I don't know too much about it just yet, but it's something I'm mm -hmm. looking to learn a lot more about because that's what I'm seeing in terms of our industry, the level of data that we process and things that affects the way we report our, our financial statements and things of that nature. So I think data, I think is, is an area that I'm looking Com to. Completely agree with you, Bola, especially big data as well for anyone listening. Yeah. And Farah, what, what would you highlight? Short and sweet, what are we thinking? Um, I would probably say sustainable finance, um, very much buzzword at the minute. Um, I feel like, it's it's something which it connects us with the outer world <laughs> not just accounting um and another buzzword i heard recently double materiality and i feel like that's going to be something that's definitely coming into how we do things how we work in the future and sort of measuring um sort of reporting and and data in itself um on what is worth a shareholder's opinion you know what do they need to know um and it's all going to sort of move and shift away from traditional accounting so i feel like if you do that from the start yeah, it's going to really help you with your journey nice fantastic never i've not heard of double materiality i'm gonna have a little read on that later for obviously on the some... ft ah uh, yes exactly it'll be on ab magazine as well i'm sure but um wendy what about yourself any key buzzwords that you think it could help someone else out listening um machine learning and robotics process automation um, it's quite a big thing in our company uh, we we have a finance big finance project on going to digitalize and automate all the finance processes in in the company to uh, enable the employees to be able to do more value added activities so uh, so it makes it more more meaningful you so you could do more meaningful tasks and do some um, enjoy your job better Marvellous. Oh, thank you very much on that, guys. And uh, I'm sure we've got lots of people with pen and paper taking it all down. But uh, we've got some questions to answer as well. I mean, I'll leave it open to the floor on there for everyone to chip in. But Alex R has put, um, is it possible to move from auditing in practice to management accounting in industry on there? So I'll leave it out to the floor. But the question was, is it possible to move from audit in practice to management accounting in industry from Alex R? Who wants to chip in first on that? I personally think it's possible. Sorry, go on. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, no, no, sorry Bob, go on. No, I said, I think it's possible. I think working, I started in practice while moving into industry. And I think with the way I look at things is no, nothing is impossible. I think you just have to plan your move strategically. You might not be able to get directly into management accounting straight away when you go into industry, but I think you can start something with something similar in industry and work in industry. You have an opportunity to work in different teams. A lot of times there's always opportunities available. For example, my, in my, in my company, for, for example. So I think with that, I don't think it's impossible at all. I think you just have to plan your move strategically. Mm -hmm. Sweet. And um, Farah, what, what, what would you think to that question? Um, so having worked in industry, mainly for very large companies, um, I would say I always work alongside uh, ex-practice audit 
<laughs> you know people so I feel like it is very much possible I think it's one of those things where once you get to a certain stage a lot of people that do work in practice especially before they move into industry work in management accounting um, and they work hand in hand in some ways too so yeah uh, definitely yeah I, I, I think from my opinion if, if you're competent in those areas you've got some experience plus you're always learning on the job as well you'll 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 absorb these sort of things like a sponge when you're around working in the team and and it'll be it'll be clicking with you in the in the next month or two if anyone's a bit apprehensive about taking on a new role there's a, there's a quote by Richard Branson he always says if you're ever worried about taking on a new role uh, that you don't think you're going to be good enough take it anyway and learn as you go from that very good piece of advice um, but next question is from Sharik on here uh, saying that uh, they're a uh, ACCA qualified, but I think they mean affiliate on here, but they didn't have any experience. So they've done all the exams, um, but uh, needing to catch up on the experience. I started uh, last year as an accounts assistant as it was maternity cover for one year. Okay. Uh, in an accounts assistant's role for some experience, what's the next best role that they should apply for? So currently in an accounts assistant role, probably working in practice on there, what sort of advice would you give? I mean, in fact, what, what do you think to that? I think that's a great role to be in and I'd probably stick with that sort of role. So accounts assistant, assistant accountant, trainee accountant, they all kind of do the same thing. And it just kind of depends on the firm you're in. So as long as the firm's got growth in there, um, you're just in that role and you're getting a lot of exposure. So you're kind of doing the bookkeeping, you're prepping the accounts, you and then you kind of start signing off accounts. So I've had trainees where I've brought them through and they've you know now ACCA qualified um and you just start kind of saying okay do the accounts okay you've got the accounts why don't you come into the meeting and then slowly just start start building them up so I'd probably say that type of role is perfect um you just need to make sure you're in the right role or whoever your manager is speak to them and say look I'm wanting to grow and you know become better in my role or this is my aim and then they can start asking you to be in meetings or giving you more exposure in, in the role that you're in. Mm. Yeah, completely agree with you, Ifa. If you don't ask Just, sometimes, you don't get. But yeah. um, when do you yeah. talked about strategically planning your career? I mean, um, what, what advice would you give on this um, if they're in an accounts assistant role? Um, I would definitely um, get a mentor who has been there before, um, who could talk me through what are the skills that need um, that I need to achieve, what are the things uh, that I could do outside of my role, such as taking out projects um, or learning new skills or taking out qualifications. AC the ACCA website has a lot of resources that you could actually take advantage of. They've got a mentorship program where you could get uh, network with other um, other um, ACCA professionals uh, like directors, finance directors, business partners, um, and I've, um, and my, my students, they have tried it and it worked really well for them. So um, definitely give it a try. Oh, fantastic. Got oh, really good stuff. I mean, we've got a question from Alex on here again saying, how did you get into lecturing, James? Oh, oh, my word. Out, out of interest, uh, you know, feel free to put in the chat if anyone's interested in becoming a teacher. That would be interesting. But once, once I was qualified ACCA to, to, to work as uh, an, an accounting lecturer, that was what the university required. Some re require a PhD um, on there, but then I, I completed my master's. It's, I, th I, I always see it as a bit marmite, a bit like what Ifat said earlier. Oh, James, teaching is not for me. I really enjoy it. I used to work in practice, teach all the um, uh, sort of apprentices who came in. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And the time just flew by. So I went, oh, I could do that to 300 people maybe in the lecture hall so yeah you've got to always got to enjoy what you do that's the main thing where you, you get up each morning before your alarm that's that's the best bit of advice i can give on there and uh, finally we've got a question from an uh, anonymous person as to what type of experience would be needed in a advisory role on there oh okay um if I, what do you think to that i think you mentioned about advisory before if they're talking about like accounts advice, it's probably just the accounts experience that's needed. So it's it's kind of being able to talk through a set of accounts, being able to understand, like, for example, for me, I compare like last year, this year, um, you know, where the where the changes could be made or just being able to talk to clients. I think that's the biggest thing is one of the one of the things that kind of always 
resonates with me is when you're listening to someone, don't be thinking of what your question is going to be. Just listen to them, you know, listen to what they're saying and understand what they're saying. And naturally you'll, you'll have your response to them. Um, because I think when I started, I was like, you know, I need to know, you know, I need to prep my question in my head to make it look like I, I know what I'm going or know what I'm doing. And it, it, it's not the case. It's just all about relationships and building that trust. Um, and when you build that trust, you, be, you become that advice. So I'd say the more experience you can get, the better it will be. Um, but there are articles out there which talk about advice. And, you know, um, James, you mentioned about like the book that you're reading. Um there's also like the Stephen Covey books and all the management, you know, the motivational books, all of them are quite helpful um, because you kind of pick up on different things. And one of the key things for me is being proactive and not reactive. Um, and so I would kind of say, you know, broaden your horizon, like Wendy says, you might want to volunteer for some projects, but it's not just advisory and that's advisory. Advisory is quite a broad word. So I'd say the more experience you get, the more exposure you get to the more you're able to help someone. Mm. A really good bit of advice there, Fat, as well. When you when you got someone talking to you at work or in everyday life, actually listen to understand, not listen to just respond as well. That is honestly so key in, in the workplace on there as well. I mean, Bo, have you got any thoughts on, on that as well for, for advisory from your experience? From my so in my experience is going back to when I was working in practice, and that one of the areas I really always enjoyed was talking to clients and understanding their needs. And I think that's one of the things that st stood out for me was really listening, and actually understand what they needed before actually making new moves and actually just rather than just putting things to them. I took time to really understand where they're coming from. Sometimes you have to adjust the way you communicate with different clients as well. So that's one of the things that I really that stood out to me when I was working in practice, always trying to adjust the way you communicate with clients. I had different types of clients who sometimes didn't want to, I mean, didn't want to really look into technology that well. They weren't really good at technology, adapting mm. and adjusting different things and actually helping them kind of guiding clients towards what could be good for them as well was something that was always, was always something we need to try and do. Oh, fantastic on that. I mean, uh, where where does the time go, guys, as well? Is it, we're already at midday on this. I mean, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed today's chat. I feel like I feel like Parkinson today. It's been fantastic <laughs> on here. But uh, are we all good, Bridget, on time or are we okay? I think we've... I think we've slightly run over. I think it's been really exciting. And James, you've done a great job um, bringing it all together. So thank you. And thank you, everyone, for your questions. And obviously, my great panel, Wendy, Ifat, Farah and Bola, I think you've been inspirational. And I'm sure you've generated, well, I know you've generated lots of questions. And I would direct people to the ACCA uh, virtual stand, where there are people all day in that stand to answer questions. So do come and say hello and network with some of your colleagues. But um, I think we are at time. And I'd just like to say thank you very much, everybody. And uh, James, well done. And ladies, if I'm allowed to say that, thank you very much. And I'll be in touch. Thank, you. thank you. And I think Mick is going to sign us out. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Bridget. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Enjoy Bye, everyone. Keep in touch.